Hello, this is the Crypto Math Wiz, and welcome back. Today I want to walk you through something that keeps coming up in chats and in forums. I see people have a misconception about the way that crypto and blockchains work, and it leads them to make potentially disastrous decisions with the security related to their wallets. And my thinking is that if I give you some fundamentals here, you'll be able to answer your own questions in the future, make better decisions, and even help the community by sharing your knowledge once you have it. So let's take a look at this diagram. And as always, before I begin, remember, this is not financial advice. It is for your entertainment only. But I promise you that if you enjoy and get entertained understanding new things like I do, you are going to be very entertained here. So let's get going. From the top... I think everyone has heard of blockchain, but you may not realize what it is. The blockchain is just a public ledger of all of the transactions that have ever happened since the beginning of the blockchain. And every computer, and there are hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands, depending on the popularity of the blockchain, has a complete history of all those transactions. So you can see how if one node goes down, maybe one whole country bans something, that doesn't really harm the global network because they're all talking to each other. So the loss of any one node or even half the nodes really won't harm things. This is the only place that coins live. So that's the number one thing I want to get out there. Your wallet doesn't hold anything. It might be better described as a keychain, but let's keep going and you'll see how that works. So you have a blockchain and you have nodes. Now, money needs to move around. There need to be transactions. So how does that happen? Well, there is a process whereby nodes can tell if a transaction's digital signature is valid or not. Effectively, they're able to say, yes, I can tell that that wallet address that is trying to send that transaction and send some coins somewhere, whoever put that together has the private key. Now, it's important, the nodes can't tell what the private key is, but it's very simple for them to validate the transaction. So in that way, the nodes receive a broadcasted transaction, they synchronize it to the other nodes who will then perform the same validation. And if at least half the nodes agree that that is a valid transaction, it gets to go onto the blockchain and becomes part of history forever. So that's how transactions work. So now if we look on the left, you must understand that anyone who has your public wallet address, which you can't keep secret, right? That is your, the way you receive coins. It is available to anybody who wants to look. They can see the contents of every wallet. They can see the full transaction history of every wallet. So that's public. You're not keeping that secret. You can't. What you must keep secret is your private key, which is just another string of letters and numbers, or it can be represented as a QR code as well. The combination of those two things allow your wallet software to sign and send a valid transaction when you want to send some coins somewhere. So now the most important piece here, wallets and how they work. Many of you, and as I did, when you start with crypto, you probably just use a hot wallet. It's the most convenient thing to do because you don't need any special hardware. You just have an app on your phone usually, or maybe an app that runs in your PC web browser. And that holds necessarily both your public wallet address and the private key because where else could it go this is the only piece of hardware that's here so it's called a hot wallet because the private key is hot it's subjected it's inside of a device that is connected to the internet and therefore is theoretically more vulnerable now i don't want to throw hot wallets under the bus here if you're careful and you don't give out your seed phrase which is a way of regenerating your your public wallet address and your private key later if you don't give that out they encrypt your private key they use all reasonable means to secure your key, but it's just not the ultimate in security. So I continue to use a hot wallet for day-to-day -day transactions. Whatever amount of money that you consider to be something you could lose and it wouldn't be a financial disaster, there is some convenience to the hot wallet. You use your fingerprint scanner, you enter your pin code, whatever it is, you're just on your phone. You don't need to carry anything else with you, easy. Now, what is a cold wallet? Well, a cold wallet is the same thing as a hot wallet, but it's split into two pieces. A cold wallet is a device that holds your private key, and sometimes USB, sometimes it's like a little phone type device that has no connectivity at all. It just uses QR codes and cameras. So it has your private key and then you have an app, some kind of companion app that performs the other function, which is being able to check your balances and, and being able to send transactions because obviously the cold wallet has no connection to the outside world on its own. So now with that understanding, we can bust some myths and misconceptions about what wallets are and what they aren't. So. First of all, 
uh, I don't want to use a cold wallet because I have tokens like SafeMoon that earn reflections on a regular basis. They're kind of like interest payments. I want to be able to receive those. And if I switch to a cold wallet, I'm not connected to the internet, so I can't get them. Well, I hope you can see here that your either your hot wallet or your cold wallet app, they're both just looking at the blockchain. All the activity, all the payments you're receiving, that's on the public blockchain that is just out there across the world. There's no need to connect to it. The only thing you need your wallet, your cold wallet for is to have that private key so when the day comes that you want to sell something or send token somewhere else, you're able to do it because you can digitally sign a transaction and it'll go through and it'll become part of the blockchain. So that's very important. The other thing is... Well, if I switch from one wallet to another, like I switch from Trust Wallet to MetaMask, how do I move my coins? Well, you have two choices here. You actually can, when you fire up that new software, you can create a new 12-word or 24-word seed phrase You can that'll generate whole new wallet addresses and private keys, and then you can choose to send a transaction from one wallet to the other, just as if you were two people. That's perfectly fine. But there are implications there, right? Like some tokens now are using what they call tokenomics, where you're going to pay a fee to do a transfer. So if you're sending money to yourself, you don't want to pay 10% or more. That's fairly silly. Sometimes I do it to spread things out, to spread things among wallet addresses, just for increased security and compartmentalization. But it's not something you want to be doing if you don't have to. So how do you, how do you make that move? Let's say you don't like the Trust Wallet software, you don't like the MetaMask software, you want to switch. Well, if you import your same 12-word seed phrase, the process that generates public wallet addresses and private keys is what's called deterministic, meaning the same words in the same order will always yield the same wallet address and corresponding private key. So you don't really need to move your wallet. You're just going to create a new device or a new app that has the same wallet running on it, meaning you have two copies of the same key. So either one can send a transaction or to look at what's currently on the blockchain in the wallet. They're identical copies of each other, just like clones. And whatever happens on one effectively happens on the other because really what's happening is one of them is sending a transaction up into the blockchain and then they both see it. So again, the coins are not in your wallet. You've now created two wallet applications that have the ability to send valid transactions up to the blockchain and they both, just like anyone else on the planet, can view the state of the blockchain and realize what balance is remaining on that wallet address. Okay, one other very disturbing thing I heard recently in a chat from a security perspective was I want to get into cold wallets, which I approve of. That's great. I have several different models and I like them. They said, I want to get into cold wallets what do I need to do? And we talked about the the problem with the transfer fees. If you want to create a new uh, wallet address and then transfer from your hot wallet to your cold wallet, that actually is a blockchain transaction. So you can do that. But this person was interested in securing their existing wallet addresses in a cold wallet, which you can do also. But here's the security risk. What if your keys were already compromised? Obviously, if someone instantly took action and just drained your whole account, okay, you know that happened. But it is possible they may say, well, for $40 in that, that wallet address or $100 in that wallet address, let's wait and see if it fills up, right? So that is unlikely. But if that happened, you are not adding any security by making effectively a copy of your key and putting it in the best safe you've ever seen because somebody else may already have a copy and they're free to use it just like you're free to use it. So don't think that somehow because you've loaded your key onto a cold wallet, you have increased your security at all in the past. If somebody already has your keys, they still do. Now what you have done, if you then go and delete your hot wallet uh, information from that app, you've stopped the possibility of that happening going forward. But purists, when you're, if you're going through the effort of buying a cold wallet, and these devices tend to be at least $50, sometimes $150, they're not terribly inexpensive, they're not, certainly not free, most people will say, now is the time to generate a new key phrase and have that key phrase be cold, meaning it has never, ever been on a device that is connected to the internet. And that offers, obviously, uh, about the ultimate insecurity. At that stage, you are thoroughly protected by the amazing randomness inherent in having 2,048 possible words and then having 12 of them in a specific order. That is just a tremendous number of possibilities. So I hope this helped you understand the basics of how wallets work, what they are and what they aren't, and the fact that all of your coins actually live in the blockchain on the public internet, and there's really nothing that's going on in your wallet. It's just a keychain that allows you to make transactions when you want to make transactions. 
Once again, I am the Crypto Math Whiz. If you found this video helpful, don't forget, click the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos like this one.